everyone! Today is the 16th of August, so it seemed as good a time as any to do the first part of my August wrap-up. I've got a stack of books here, so let's get started! The first book that I finished was The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss. Now, I read The Name of the Wind at the end of last month and absolutely loved it. And I wanted to put a bit of space between the two of them, but then I just kind of couldn't. So, yeah. I read the second one and now I'm in the same boat as everyone else waiting for the third book. It's a continuation of Quoth's story from the first story. So part of it's set at the Magical University and yeah all sorts of exciting and interesting things happen but I won't go into spoiler territory because this is just a wrap up. But the second one as well as the first one went easily onto my favourites list for the year. The second book I read was The Rental Heart and Other Stories by Kirsty Logan and Kirsty Logan wrote The Grace Keepers which has had a lot of buzz on book YouTube recently. This is her collection of short stories, uh, her first collection, and she's just had another collection published and I'm super excited to read that now as well. I really enjoyed this. I always find this with short story collections and I'm not quite sure how to rate them because usually there are one or two that just kind of bring it down a bit for me. So I gave this four stars but I definitely definitely recommend that you check these out especially if you like fairy tale retellings. She does short stories really well and I think I enjoyed most of this more than The Grace Keepers. Then I read Fair Play by Tobe Jansen and this is sort of a novel and sort of a collection of short stories. I think the best way to describe it is a series of vignettes. They all feature the same two characters and they are two women who have been in a long-term relationship and live on an island. It's quite an important piece of LGBT literature because it takes a different sort of angle and it's not looking at the initial romance or a coming out story. This is looking at a pretty successful relationship much further along down the line. It's very minimal in its style and in its plot in fact there really isn't much of a plot, they're just these little vignettes of different parts of their lives, different aspects. Um, in one they go travelling, in another one they are in a boat in the fog and they kind of have to wait until the fog clears. I'll be honest, I did find some of these a bit dull. It probably didn't help that I read this on my phone as well, so I was just reading bits at a time and I was often reading them on trains and things. I find in general if I'm reading an ebook which I read on my phone, then I don't tend to enjoy it as much as if I'm reading a physical book or an audiobook. Speaking of audiobooks, the next book that I listened to was Special Topics in Calamity Physics by Marisha Peschel. Now, Marisha Peschel wrote Night Film, which is a book that's got quite a lot of buzz on booktube recently. Uh, it's not one that I've read, so I can't really compare. Uh, but I really really didn't like this book. I actually didn't finish it, I got halfway through and put it on the DNF pile, but I feel like I'd read enough of it to be able to review it and give it a star rating. I don't like giving one star ratings, but I felt like this deserved it. I heard that this was a lot like The Secret History and when books are compared to The Secret History I usually want to read them, which is maybe a mistake. Maybe I should stop doing that. This was kind of like the secret history meets Mean Girls and all the characters were really really flat. I didn't feel like they had any distinguishing characteristics, they were all sort of the same. In contrast to something like the secret history where each of the characters are so fully fleshed out and you feel like you know them. The other thing that I didn't like is the sort of pseudo-academic tone that the book takes and there are lots and lots of references to other books and they're all footnoted, which is all right if you're reading a book, but in an audiobook it's really really irritating. And then I felt like the rest of the book didn't match this sort of academic style. The characters don't really seem that interested in their studies. I was more interested in their studies than they were. Um, so yeah, I put this on the DMF pile. It just really wasn't my thing. So this put me in something of a reading slump, so <laughs> you know what I did? <laughs> I went back and reread The Name of the Wind, which I'd only read a couple of weeks ago. This is what I used to do as a child, if I really loved a book I would just read it again and again and again. Actually I'm gonna do a whole video on book hangovers and how to deal with them. Anyway the next book that I finished was a non-fiction one and this is one that I've been reading for ages actually. Um, I left it in New Zealand but my dad came over very recently and he brought over a whole lot of books including a whole lot of design books which is what this is. It is how to be a graphic designer without losing your soul and yeah this is just lots of 
tips and advice it's all in this sort of paragraph style i thought that this was really interesting and really helpful and it is one that i will definitely refer back to in the future this book was given to me by the lovely jen campbell and i really enjoyed most of this however as with most short story collections there were a few that sort of let it down for me that i didn't really connect with uh, but it may also be because this is the book that I had by my bed and I was reading it before bed and sometimes I was quite tired when I was reading some of them so I may not have sort of clicked with them in the same way but other ones I really really liked um, and a lot of them are set in Scotland which is great because I like Scotland and I've got family up there I've just been up there last week actually so I enjoyed that aspect of it Alice Smith's writing is fantastic but I think I prefer her novels that said I definitely will read more of her short story collections on the topic of short story collections the next one that I read is New World Fairy Tales by Cassandra Parkin ah oh, this is wonderful this was loaned to me by the lovely Jen Campbell and she said, Holly, you must read this because it's wonderful. And she was right. I loved every single story. This doesn't often happen with short story collections. And ah, oh, it was great. I think it really helped that I knew all of the fairy tales that these were based on. I enjoyed the challenge of sort of figuring out what fairy tales these were based on. Uh, I think these are all based on the Grimm Brothers stories. So um, they're sort of more well-known ones, I think. The interesting thing about these is that they are set up as interviews. So they are dialogues, well, one person dialogues pretty much, um, where you've got one person recording what the other person says and that person is recounting a tale that is a retelling of a fairy tale. So they're all numbered and you've got interview 4, interview 9, 15, 17, 27 and 42 which suggests that there are other ones out there and maybe she will write more and that would be fantastic and wonderful so I cannot recommend this enough there's one story which is a retelling of the three little pigs and that was particularly relevant to issues going on in America at the moment and I think she did a great job of bringing these fairy tales into the modern day so yes this is definitely one which you should all read it's it's fabulous the next book was another audiobook and this one was Palimpsest by Catherine M. Valente now that name may sound familiar because she wrote the Fairyland series this is one of her adult novels and this was written before she wrote the Fairyland series and there are links, there are connections between this and the Fairyland books, which is really, really exciting. So if you read the Fairyland books and want to know sort of a bit of the background, it's not directly linked, but the book, The Girl Who Circumnavigated Fairyland in a Ship of Her Own Making, is referenced in this book. However, it's not a children's book, and this is definitely not one to read to your kids, because it's basically about a sexually transmitted city. It's this kind of dream world and in order to get there you have to sleep with somebody else who's been there. So this follows four characters who have made it to Palimpsest, which is the name of the city, and it's about their experiences there and they're trying to figure out how to maybe get there and stay there rather than having to go back and forth. It's a really fun one to discover for yourself as these characters are discovering it. So in that sense, I don't want to say more about the plot. I will say that it is exquisitely written. I love the way she writes. There's also lots of strange kind of magical realism elements. I mean, it's, it's fantasy because you've got this other world, but then some of it feels more like magical realism. If that makes sense. I imagine that if you like the Fairyland series and are over 18 then you'll probably enjoy this book. Number 2.5 um, in the King Killer Chronicle so this is related to The Name of the Wind and The Wise Man's Fear and it's uh, The Slow Regard of Silent Things by Patrick Rothfuss and it's this little novella and it's very very pretty and it has beautiful illustrations in this sort of minimal etching like style uh, so yeah I really I really like that this is about one of the characters from The Name of the Wind and I was a little bit disappointed by this because I was really excited to return to this world and also to learn more about this character because I think that she's really really interesting she's this real enigma in the story but 
I don't really feel like we learned much more about her by reading this. If anything, it made her more mysterious, so it was it was quite frustrating in that sense. We see her doing all sorts of strange and wonderful things and it's never really explained why. And the other thing that I didn't like is that the, the plot arch of this is we, we find out at the beginning that she's meant to meet this person, um, a man, at some point in the future. And so she spends all of her time leading up to this, preparing for this meeting, and it just kind of feels like her whole life revolves around this meeting and this man. I felt like this book might give us a bit more outside of that, and it didn't really, I find it quite frustrating. If you've read this, let me know and let me know what you thought of it. She's such an interesting character, but ah, oh, I just wanted some background or something. Um, I liked her voice. I really enjoyed hearing from her perspective, but yeah, it was just the lack of depth really that irritated me. The next book I read is really, really popular and everyone seems to love it. I may, may be the only person on the planet who doesn't really like it. Um, it's Saga! Oh, this is volume one and I will not be reading volume two. This just was really not for me. I think it's just that graphic novels are not my thing. Um, I really liked Blue is the Warmest Colour and I like reading Alice and Bechtel, but this kind of more comic-y style just doesn't really suit me. I will say that the art is really beautiful at times, like this here. I, I love the use of colour and I, I think that's one of its strongest points. Bright and colourful pages and then you've got other much darker ones and they really contrast with this brightness. The story was kind of so-so. I didn't really care that much about characters and it's gonna take much more than a radical attitude towards breastfeeding to make me interested. And aside from that, it did feel quite cliched. So I don't know, it may become more exciting and less cliched in future ones, but I'm I'm not gonna continue because I just, I don't think it's my thing. Okay, two more books. This one is Ali Smith, another Ali Smith, and I really, really enjoyed this. Uh, like I said, I prefer her novel or novella length books. Uh, this is this is a pretty short one. It was a one sitting read. This is part of the Canongate Myths series, and it is a retelling of Ovid's story from the Metamorphoses, the myth of Iphis. This is a real gender bending book. It plays around with gender and sexuality, and you've got two, main female characters, uh, they are sisters, and one sister is coming to terms with her sexuality and the other sister is coming to terms with her sister's sexuality. I think if you haven't read any Ali Smith this would be quite a good place to start uh, because it's quite short and you get a good sense of her style and the kind of themes that she plays around with. This is my second favourite one after How To Be Both. And finally I read The Fisherman by Chigozi Obioma. This is a book that has been on my radar for quite a while, I've been wanting to read it for a while, uh, but it has recently been longlisted for the Man Booker Prize, so I thought it was a good time to pick it up and read it. I didn't actually pick it up and read it, I listened to it instead, and it was a really good audiobook, I thought it worked well in that format. It's a sort of parable or a moral tale, and it has a lot of folklore in there. It is about four brothers and they call themselves the Fishermen, hence the title, and there is a prophecy made by a madman and it's how that prophecy affects them and affects their wider family. It's set in Nigeria and it's a really great read. It's it's an easy read. It's not one of these really literary difficult prose kind of stories. Um, there is definitely a plot there. It's very accessible, I would say. And if you're wanting to read something from the long list, I would say that this would be a good one to go for. I've now read three of the books from the long list, uh, the other two being A Little Life by Hani Yanagihara and The Chimes by Anna Smale. I would say that this one was probably the easiest read and probably the most accessible, so it's definitely one that I would recommend. There are a few others on the long list that I want to read. I'm actually reading uh, The Moor's Account at the moment, and there are a couple of others that I'd like to get to, but I'm interested to know other people's thoughts on the long list. Have you read anything off of the long list? Do you want to read anything off of the long list? Do you care about the Booker Prize? Or maybe you don't? So leave those thoughts in the comments below and we can chat. As always, thank you very much for watching and I'll hopefully see you next time. Bye!